Good morning. All right. Thank you, man. Two, uh, Tuesday and Friday. Tuesday and Friday. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll keep this and wait until Tuesday. Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. All right. And later. All right. Hey guys, I want to welcome you to another edition of Halftime Chat. And um, today I've got another special guest. Um, I always enjoy when my, um, I'm able to get um, one of my previous guests to come back to do a follow-up show. And today I've got Mr. Dalvin, um, yes, of, of Jodeci, back on Halftime Chat. He has a new LP that's out called Famous, and it's actually on Bandcamp. So it's not on streaming services. So you can buy the actual um, download the digital album, um, which is merchandise and stuff. So we are going to be able to talk about why he chose to do that instead of going through streaming services and um, other things he's he's he's, um, he's into as well. Jodeci have just come off a big tour. Um, they first came back reunited with the. Um, culture tour no the the culture tour then they did their own block party tour featuring drew hill and swv and um, i think they're going out in a new year but it's going to be interesting to hear about what's going on not, not just with mr dalvin but the whole of jodeci so stay tuned Yo, <laughs> Dalvin, how are you doing? I'm trying to trying to get you in my uh, earbud. Okay, are, are you able to hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what's going on my earbuds. They're not connected. I don't know. Well, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's been um, it's it's been um, it's been almost two years it's actually since we last spoke. So I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, September twenty one. So I appreciate the fact that you took time again to 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 come on board. Um, no worries, man. No worries. I was good to hear from you. Yeah, but you know, you're really busy, man. So you know. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, after we interviewed you, 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 you guys signed with PM Music as Jodeci and went on 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 the um, on the Culture Tour. Culture Tour, yeah. Which mm-hmm. which which was you know, I it didn't come to Europe, but those who went, you're just amazed just to see you guys. And then after the culture tour, you did the block party, R and B block yeah. party, which yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it it just seems as if you know, it's almost as if you guys hadn't left the nineties. You just had the energy and the vibe, and <laughs> and tore the house down. How did it feel for you? Just, I mean, it was busy because before you were doing your solo stuff, and then one minute, you know, you're touring throughout America. Um, it was cool, man. You know, uh, that's still going. I'm still doing, you know, my Mr. Dowling thing. But I, I just felt it, it was necessary to uh, strengthen that 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 uh, foundation, the Jodeci Foundation, and get out there and let the you know let the people really see what they you know what they've been missing as far as Jodeci. So it was cool, man. You know the whole no distance thing, just to you know get the cobwebs off. You know what I'm saying, and <laughs> get back on the stage and, and do what we do, man, at a high level. You know, just just you know just high high octane. Yeah. As you might say. Well, what about the the, the blog party? Because that that in itself, I mean, you 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 guys being the headliners, how did you how did that feel like doing that? Um, it, it it was it was it was a lot of work, man. It was fun, 
But once, you know, behind scenes, because, you know, it was behind the, you know, behind the scenes and the preparation, it's a lot of work because when you're the headliners, people don't know, you have to be responsible for everybody that's on the tour. Wow. So, you know, we invited Drew Hill, we invited SWV, and it was cool, but it's a lot of work, man. You know, just it's not just getting out there headliners, it's, you know, all the things that go on behind the scenes, the production, the sound, the lights, you know, it all falls on you. And so, you know, as being a headliner, so it was a lot of work. You know, we had fun when we could. Once we hit the stage, it was fun. But after that, it was all work, you know. Did, did you get involved with the outfit design? Because I saw, you know, the the, the the different outfits and the Geod Geodesy outfit. Was that, was that, did you get back into? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, that's been from day one. But, no, not only the outfits, you know, I was involved with the sound, the lights, the production, the stage, and the band. You know, I put my hand in everything that, you know, that we that we know that's going to make Geodesy just, you know, the, the larger than life group that we've that we've always been like we've never left you know what I'm saying so we didn't want to just start to keep creeping and just have you know just do everything half we just gave it everything you know from everything from the hits of the lights to the smoke to the everything that we use we were involved you know so you know yeah well I mean as I said it, it was definitely it's definitely great to have you guys back um mm -hmm. it, I guess you, it that meant that you had to put on hold your solo stuff during the the two last two shows, was that the case? Um, well, as far as like promoting it, really, kind of yeah. But I mean, you know, even like when I make posts on on Instagram doing a tour, like I was still, you know, hey, go get my EP, you know, go to Bandcamp, Mister Dalvin dot Bandcamp dot com, go get this. But you know, the focus was basically it was mostly on Jodeci, making sure that we didn't leave no stones unturned. You know what I'm saying? So I was trying to juggle the tour as much as I can, but it, it was basically like let's get the foundation straight. So above that, everything that spawns from that would be successful, you know, in our own right. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, before we talk about the EP, um, I was expecting the f conclusion to the story you started off when you had good times and she's bad and, and I right. and inseparable. I, I loved Love Me Down. I, and uh, you probably saw my, I was really pushing that that single. Right. Really loved it. Um. And I thought, okay, we're going to get the sort of the, the final conclusion, but what happened? Well, you know, it's, it's, as an artist, I think that you go through certain phases at certain times. You know, you hear certain things at certain times and certain bodies of work don't go with certain bodies of work. When you hear it, it's like, okay, well, this goes with this, this don't go, you know, this goes with this. Let me put this on hold. Let me go in this direction. You know, just as an artist, you know, you, you, especially now if you're an independent artist, you have the freedom to express yourself any kind of way at any time you want to. You know, because I write and produce and make all my own music, so I don't have to wait on the producers. If I hear something in the middle of the night, I can get up and go do it. I can put it out the next day. Like, now you have the freedom to be, you know, and, and express yourself any kind of way. Like, the single that actually comes out, you know, is uh, She Needs Me. It's just a short idea that I had a dream about, about somebody that I, that I thought I imagined, and I just made it. And I let's go this direction. So I kind of went away from famous and went to this direction. But famous is still, you know, my that's my baby right now. But I heard something, and I'm, you know, we done shot visuals and videos to it already, which should be dropping on the fifteenth of this month. So, and I didn't even shoot any videos to to uh, famous yet, which I'm gonna go back to that. But this is I felt was necessary for me at that second at this moment. So I kind of jumped on it full fledged, you know. Oh, so that because I, I I was. A little disappointed that I wasn't going to get the conclusion to that the whole saga. Are you telling me that that's parked or is it disappeared? So I should forget the. Oh, oh no 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 no! It, everything is everything is um you know if, if people laugh you know that we laugh and they say we laugh at God laughs at our plans you know like every day when I hear something I hear it, you know right then and knowing I have the creative freedom to do what I feel at the moment is what I do. I say okay, let me put a pen in that. It's kind of like reading reading a book. He's like, okay, let me let me put a pen in this chapter. Let me skip ahead, and then I'll come back. It's mm -hmm. almost like that type of thing. So I'm hearing certain things, and it's kind of navigating me to where I'm at actually right now as far as even doing Jodeci. I hear certain things in my mind. I say, okay, that's for me. This is for Jodeci. That's for me. It's like I'm shuffling self the deck. I'm putting things here and there. So as far as like this tour, in which we have a big announcement coming up Tuesday, it's going to blow everybody away as far as Jodeci. Uh -huh. you know, but it, it is, it's, it's like I'm putting all these puzzle pieces together, and they're all falling in line. You know what I'm saying? Not even strategically. It's just what I'm seeing in there. They're making sense. You know, if I follow, like I'm following like God's lead, I think right now and everything is following, following like it's supposed to fall, you know? So that's so those cool. of us who have been following your, 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 your the, the saga over the last three years shouldn't be disappointed that we, we, we should see a conclusion. We should see the story. Right. Being... 
Okay. I, yeah. And I think that most of my fans are also Jodeci fans, and they can probably see my growth as far as Jodeci and as far as on my own, which is simultaneously, you know, I think leveling out. Because first, you know, people was just Jodeci as Casey and JoJo as this and the group, and Dalvin's just the, you know, the guy, the pretty boy, bring all the girls. But now I just see my growth as far as my musical ability, my musical talent, as far as like the, the things I brought to the group, you know, the weight that I have in this group. And it's and, and it's like it's simultaneously growing as, as one is catching the other. Well, first it was just Jodeci, and I was just somewhere in the deck. Now you flip the, the face card over, and then you see me, you might see this, you might see that, but I'm there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and this is not things that I that I hope for. These are things I knew were gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't I, I didn't have to go out there and say, hey, I can sing, I can do this, I can do this. It's not that. I just do what I know how to do without me trying to impress anybody. Like I make music that I like. I don't have to make music that the world likes. If you like it, I'm glad I love it. But what I whatever I like is what I make. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's just that's just my thing. And as far as like me strengthening Jodeci, the brand, I'm part of that brand. So it strengthens me as well, you know? Yeah, which makes sense. I mean, if we if anyone who didn't believe that, if you think about what New Edition did, they go up as a go up and do the BBD, Johnny Gill and all that stuff, right. and then they come back as the collective and they just right. become like the super group. And I guess right. Now, for any, those of us who were following um, the things you were doing over the the the, the lockdown, like am I think of good times? I'm like that's a that's a summer jam, but unfortunately it was around lockdown, and so people weren't ready to really understand. I right. mean, it was, the video was amazing, the whole vibe was it. I mean, but I, I think you know, I, I wish it it had come out at a time when we were all ready to come out and have a good time. I think right, we were right, just right, in a right. very different space. But you right. said it's timing. I mean, it's, it's timing, and you gotta understand too. Like what I've got to understand and learn, good music never goes away. It might mm-hmm. come back years later. And good times is one of those songs. Like you look at um, what's the the girl name? Uh, girl, put your racket on. What's the, what's the name? Uh, uh, I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Um, Carly. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Carly Berry. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Carly, yeah. So her record selling itself for six years. Oh. Nobody ever even heard this record. Nobody heard this record for six years, and it came back to be number one smash. So it's like you know, time, good music doesn't have an expiration date. It's yeah. like almost says it's full of preservatives. It doesn't have an expiration date. It's full of preservatives. It never go away. It just take the right person opening the can, whether it be canned goods or you know whatever it is, a non-perishable item, and hearing it, the right mm-hmm. person hearing it, and then the world gets to hear it. So it's, it's it's I made it. I put it on the shelf, and it's up to somebody to find the jewel. You know, so it's like we don't know how good treasures until we go seek it and find it. So it's like those are one of them treasures that that I know that it, that that's what good times is. Not just because I made it. If I would heard it from some another artist, I was like, that's a good song. That's a great song. And, you know, unfortunately, like if you're an independent artist and not signed to a big, you know, corporation, it's tough for people to hear your music unless you're dumping billions of dollars in your records. So you you just it's kind of like you make something great and you just put it out there. Yeah. You make something great and you put it out there. You know, and if you go through like archives of unknown artists, you hear great songs. You're like, why did this song got here? Because most of the times they're not signed to these big corporations or they're not selling their soul to be what the world wants them to be. And this is artists just, you know, giving you a true form of art, not just something marketable that because it's trendy. You know what I'm saying? So that's mostly where I fall. I feel like I fall in the category of the solo artist. Because you know, when you think about Jodeci, you think about Jodeci. And we think about singers, you know, Casey and Jojo and Jodeci. So it's like, you know, hey, I make great music, but I'm not going to try to force it on you because it defines you. And that's just yeah. my, that's my approach to my music. So, you know. Yeah. But also the, the fact, and, and I said it the last time when I saw the um, the video for um, um, and I, is the fact that you, 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 it felt like you, you, you had a label paying for your videos because you didn't just, just do some, cheap old back of the yard fair video right. you actually did some and i was like wow what was he? you know that, no, that i pay seems... for all my own videos man i pay for everything i do i pay for all my pocket wow so but it's the quality yeah. that you're putting into the so it's not just the quality of the production but it's the quality of the the, the um of the video so i guess people would be surprised to think wow is he you know is he got a, a big label behind and stuff no uh, i direct my own videos i write them you know, and I, I mean, I do everything myself it's in-house. You know, my sister comes along and she's always chirping in my ear. Like, hey, brother, do this and do that. Brother. But I mean, as far as everything else, you know, we, it's just, it's me and her, just a team. We, we, we sit down visually and I tell her what my plan is and she'll, she'll, you know, make it come to life with, you know, we'll seek locations, but we do all this, like just basically be a two-man team or a man and woman team. So it's like, 
You know, it's because it, it, nobody knows your vision like you do. Yeah. You can express it or try to explain it to somebody, but you know, then they they put their money up. They want you to do what they, what they want to you know to do. It. I'm not opposed to labels coming to me and joining in and helping me what I'm doing, but I'm already on a, on a path that I know what my vision is. See, most artists don't have a vision; they have a voice but no vision. So somebody come and give them the vision to their voice. That's not what I am. You know, I have a voice, a vision. I have ideas, and I sit down. I do everything. I, I engineer my own music. I, you know, produce it. I write it. I make it. You know what I'm saying? My nephew come in and play additional instruments that I need him to. But for, for, for the most part, it's my solo journey. It's all me. It's a yeah. one man show. So I it, it mean, it's, so like I said, you know, I'm not the best at what I do, but I'm good at what I do. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, you know, there's something that you said two years ago when we when we did an interview was about, um, you know, that people can just come on board, listen, and just bring hate. And I didn't really think much of it. And then we talk about how, you know, sometimes Lisa was always trying to say, you know, like me for who I am and stuff. And But I realized, you know, you put out Love Me Down. As I said, I was a big fan. A lot of, 90% of the people who listened to it were like really raving it. Then you had one or two people saying, Oh, how come KC didn't sing? And I was, and, and I was like, wait a minute, right. you didn't pay for him to do this. It wasn't as if you, you know, you paid for it and you're like, oh, I right. thought I was going to see Joe to see it. And, now I'm seeing it. and I couldn't understand how people could not just appreciate. Well, be- because you look at it like this. Fans become clones most of the time. They become clones of what they think something is supposed to be because that's what they've been shown or presented. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if that's like you take um, look at uh, Travis Scott. He took the Nike suit and turned around. He reversed it. People hated it, hated it. Now it became the most expensive, elusive sneaker that you can have now. Mm-hmm. You know, because they used to see the Nike suit go one way, he turned around and reversed it. And uh, he messed up Nike. Yeah, blah, blah. Because we're so programmed to seeing it one way. Now he has the most elusive, expensive sneaker you cannot get unless you spend it upwards of $5,000, $6,000. You know, I mean? so we look at it like that. You know, it, it, th- people want things the way they are used to seeing them or presented to them. I can go make a great song and I can be like, hey, you know what? Casey sung that. But, oh, we love it. We love it. <laughs> Those song. Oh, we love it. We love it. Well, actually, that was the album. Oh, well, we should let Casey sing it. I mean, it's the same thing. You know, it, it's people in their minds, they think what, they're, what they want is what they want. You know what I'm saying? But it's not all the time what's, what, what it is. So it's like we get, we become clones as fans, we become clones as hearers and, and purchasers of music that, we think things to be one way when in fact they're just as good another way. It's hard for us to accept sometimes, unless you're just a real fan, unless you just take time to realize this is something different. You know what I'm saying? So, but how do you deal with it? Though. How do you do? Because I, it, it's, as I said, it, it took, it takes me time for people to say, Oh, how come you didn't ask this question? Or people were complaining that your the video of you was smaller than me. And they thought I was just being, yeah, I just wanted to put you in the background. I'm thinking, <laughs> but it's, I, you know, I, I, Listen, man, at the end of the day, you're great at what you do. Me, as as your your guest, you're great at what you do. You ask good questions. It don't matter what you ask. It's going to always be something you didn't ask. It don't matter what you do. It's going to always be something you didn't do. From a small group of people, and like I told you before, we get hyper-focused on the small percentage of people that appreciate what you do when you're good than the people, the, the outpouring of love that you get from the people. And it's always... And, and it's crazy because that's just how the psychological, the, 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 the psyche of us, of our minds work. I can get a hundred people saying, I love you. I love you means blah, blah, blah. But one person say one negative thing and your mind just go to that. And you know, and it, like now, like I told you last time, I just delete them and I block them. I don't even, I sometimes want to go in and I just yell and just like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy and be grateful for the people that love what I do and appreciate what I do. Versus the one or two negative comments that I get. Because some people are miserable and they want, like they say, misery loves company. So no matter how good at what you do, you can ask me a million questions. Well, why didn't you ask me a million and one? This is the <laughs> one question you didn't ask. And it's always something. So you can't make everybody happy. I learned that, you know? Yeah. I saw you, you had a video of you stepping out. You had your hat and you had your black suit. And then I saw one guy says, oh, you look great, but I don't like the shoes. <laughs> Shoes, yeah, you saw that too. Yeah, and I at first it, it looks crazy, and I usually don't read comments, but sometimes things it just pop out, and I just and I was like, you know, well, why, why, and I, just, and I was like, why, and the thing I want to say, I don't say, you know, I just say, you know, you know, I think I said thank you, but this is not for you, and so yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, it, 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 it's like, but but still, you know, it's, and, and my thing is, I want to ask people, why do you waste your time coming to my page? Like, I'm going to really change who I am for you. 
<laughs> like, you know, it, I don't get it, you know, but that's just life. That's, you know, people want to, they just want to be opposed. It was like, he was giving me a compliment and dissing me at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's like, you know, yeah. I just laugh at most of the time. It's like, yeah, you know, I just take my head. I'm like, yeah. Um, the famous EP. Um, now, most people release music, they go onto Spotify, even though you don't get, you may get 50 cents on it, but why did you decide to do go through Bandcamp in the first place? Um, well, because I control whatever I do, whatever I put up. And, you know, not even the money. I, I kind of want to separate my fans and see who they really are. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a good way to see who stay engaged no matter where you go. And it's, it's, a, it's a risk to take, but it's a good risk to take. It, and it's because it's not like I'm really losing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hey, follow me over here. This is something special. And let me see which one of y'all are willing to go outside of the norm and follow me over here. And, and they got a great response. You know, and I might re-release it back on Apple Music and back on a major platform, but I want to see who will follow me over here, basically. People can say they're fans all day. And I tell people this, and my sister always tell this. Some of my friends who are upcoming artists, they got all these followers, all these followers. They got 100,000 followers. And, oh, I got this many followers, blah, blah, blah. I say, okay, you want to see how many people really love you? Ask everybody to cash that view 10 cent. Out of all the million followers, you got 100,000 followers. Cash that you 10 cent. At the end of the week, just all week, just all your posts, cash that me 10 cent. You my fan, cash that me 10 cent. I bet you by the end of the week, you won't even have $200. But you got a million followers. Tell them to send you 10 cent. You won't have it. I mean, because it doesn't translate the music. So it's like, you know, how many followers don't translate? People come sometimes because you're half naked if you're a female on there. <laughs> or you're doing something that's, that's, that's going, what you want to go viral and you're following a trend. And I say, I can get an overweight girl eating donuts and she get 3 million followers. You make great music, but you might have 50,000 followers. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So it's, 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 it's not a, that's not going to translate to music. So those I don't make music to try to get likes, followers. I make music because I like it. Fans, if they fall in, they fall in. But if me trying to make music that fans like are going to buy, I drive myself crazy. Yeah. I run myself crazy. I try to go viral, I drive myself crazy. And that's just not the type of artist I am. So, you know. I just stick to what I love doing. If you like it, hey, I love it. If you don't, hey, that's on you. You know. I mean, as I said, it's um, it's 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 it reminded me of when people used to do CD Baby. You know, when they they, they because they didn't want to, they didn't have any in the major label, so they went to CD Baby, and it's like it it became a way of controlling and making releasing your music. And I think it is probably a better way to be able to you know because the streaming services are just going to take it swallow it up and it, it right. may not get the same publicity as it is as you as you're doing it directly um but also you have the opportunity to, to sell your merchandise as well Does, was that part right. of it yeah i mean you know like i said like i said you as far as you're your own marketing tool whatever you put in it is pretty much what you're, what you're gonna get out of it you know artists nowadays and like i said unless you sign to a major label you're your own marketing genius. Is there's nothing, whatever you put into it, you pretty much gonna get out of it. You know what I'm saying? You can go through social media, blah, blah, blah. But it's not like the the, the, the uh, industry constantly changes. So mm -hmm. it's up to you. How do you want to, you know, you know, to direct your narrative of what you want to be, what kind of artist you want to be? You know, I can go in here every day, hey, go get my out from Bandcamp, go get my out from Bandcamp. And I might get two people to buy it in a week, three people to buy it. So it's like, it's almost like, you know, you are, what you put out there, what you try to receive back, you know, as much energy and time you put into it, you're going to get that back. You know what I'm saying? But you can't be disappointed. If people don't flock to you and you get this cult following of, 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 Hey, I got, you know, overnight, I got a million followers. I don't even look at that. It's like, you know, I enjoy making music. So at the end of it, that's my passion. You know, mm -hmm. I'm making a good living doing, I'm making a good living, you know, uh, doing Jodice and all this. So I, I'm having fun doing it. I'm not stressed. It's not like I need this to pay my bills or live a good life. It's not like that. I'm, I'm doing what I enjoy, and this is my passion to make music on my own. Besides Jodeci, I'm enjoying doing it. You know, so. So is there a story behind Famous? Because we've you parked the sort of the, the the relationship one that we were following with with eager eyes and stuff. Right. So with Famous, what's the what's the concept of, of that? I mean, I've listened to the track, but I, and I'll go through some of my favorite ones. But what's the what's the idea with with Famous? Famous is is like it's just kind of a, it's kind of a, a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a lifestyle. Like, uh, it's, it's the ups and downs, I think, of, you know, you go from, if you listen to Raw, Raw is like, hey, this is just me. I'm here. I'm, it's a performance. I'm, my life is a performance. You know, then you go to the, you know, uh, um, uh, the next track is uh, like I do. 
Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, a, a love song. It's, it's, it's a love song. I hate love. Kind of relationship that people can relate to. Then, you, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of trying to take you on a journey to where my life is kind of at. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where it is, you know. I mean, what was my favorite when I started it off? Um, right. I I like I like I like the whole the the vibe of raw, but there was the one that reminded me of um, Ella Kudi's "I Need a Girl." It, that was um, check out check check out me uh, check out my yeah. check yeah. out my yeah. It reminded yeah, me. When I of, said by Ella, I took the the whole concept from, from I Ella Kudi. That's why I mentioned him in the song. You know uh, what I'm saying? So, and you think about raw, like I got Big Daddy Kane, and these are some of my you know the the it was heavily influenced, and I wanted to make this kind of like a kind of throwback sound, like you know the beats are kind of old and. You know, mm-hmm. they kind of like digging in a crate, finding old samples. And and I wanted it to sound like that because that's what I like. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I said, OK, I'll make this kind of like an old kind of 90s, kind of like an old throwback 80s rap. You know, I got Big Daddy Kane sample, Rock Kim, and Check Out Ma, and I'm referencing LL. And I took kind of the concept of LL when his joints for Check Out Ma. So it's kind of like, you know, this is just me. This is Mr. Dalvin, what I grew up listening to, the artists I love. You know, so the influence of, of what influenced me as far as musically. So that's basically what Famous is, you know. Yeah, as I said, I, I, yeah, because I, I listened to when I uh, check out mine, and I was like, oh, that that reminds me of I need a girl, um, I need love, but that kind of you know slowed down and then just a rap a, a vibe over it. So, but it's right. interesting that you mentioned LL, um, the uh, the silly me. I don't know how to pronounce the lady. Is it Faber 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 Baby? Yeah, I don't have to pronounce it. Okay, yeah. so it's not just me. <laughs> I was listening to it, and, and it reminded me of, I don't know if you remember the film Love Jones with uh, Tay Did. Um, I do. So have, have, I love the whole poetry stuff in, 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 in the mix and the whole vibe and stuff. And actually, I thought, oh, it would be great if she had more of that. But it was really different, interesting concept, you know, something like a flow tree kind of stuff, which, right, which right, we kind right. of missed out. How did mm-hmm. you just did what? What was going through your mind when you thought about trying to create? That? Well, the, 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 I have, I have, I was driving the car and I wrote the song in my head because most of my write songs there I just freestyle them. I don't really write the lyrics down. I just freestyle them. I try to, you know, try to remember them by by the time I get home, like I did good times. I'm driving the song, <laughs> the lyrics come in my head, so I'm trying to drive home so I can record it real fast because I don't write them down really. But silly me, I was uh, see that the young lady had followed me on Instagram and I was looking at her posts and her words were really like they were really dope and did the way she. Scheme. So I reached out to her and said, hey, I got an idea for a song. Because I'd already kind of made up Silly Me. And I said, it'd be a dope conversation between a girl and a guy. You know what I'm saying? And, and I asked her to, to be on the record, and she and she liked it. So Wow. Oh, so, yeah. okay. So she, she, she was just someone on sign that you just... Yeah, we just kind of met, like, on Instagram. And and and, and it was crazy because the song wasn't done. It wasn't recorded. It was kind of, I kind of gave her an idea, and she went with it. And she... she she didn't even know how it was going to come together. So I kind of pieced the conversation together about me and her just having a conversation. She didn't even hear like my vocals or the verses or nothing. So it, it just kind of flowed with what I had already wrote in my head. So yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to concept how we, how we came together with that. Wow. I mean, I, you know, I was excited by it. And then all of a sudden I go to your IG and you're like, yeah, I'm coming out with uh, She Needs Me. I'm thinking, well, I don't see that on the was, like, Did I buy the wrong one? What's going on here? So, so it kind of feel like, kind of, so, you know, kind of threw me. I'm like, what's, what's going on? Well, well She Needs Me is actually going to be on all platforms. It's not going to be on Bandcamp. Because it's actually, the crazy thing about She Needs Me is not really a song, it's an interlude. It's really an interlude. So that's why I repeated the, the chorus a couple of times. It's, it's really a short interlude. And I was like, you know what? This is, I'm going to just, I'm going to throw this out there because it was, it was, I really enjoyed listening to it because I actually made it for any little something else I was going to do. And it just started with that because I had it. Like I said, I had a dream about it. And I was like, and I got up and I made it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to start a campaign about this. And then I just kind of just started this live session campaign and all these things. And I was like, it turned, it took kind of like some life that I didn't expect it to do. Mm-hmm. So now I went and I shot a video in the studio, which we're going to release next Friday and the single comes out next Friday. So it was just like a really short, I think two and a half minutes on with the video is like maybe four minutes, but it's cool. Then I'm releasing like, releasing like a video documentary that comes right behind it of us just in the studio, just, you know, working in the studio. So, so is it's it, cool. I saw you with the, you, you, is that your nephew, Justin, yeah, on, my the, nephew. on yeah. the piano? And then there's, there's a choir behind it as well? Well, it's two girls that, that they don't actually sing on a track, but when we do it live, like sometime and when we just mess around, like I've been doing lately, those are the girls that are singing like the yeah, yeah parts. And, yeah, you yeah. Know, live. But, is oh, that the galaxy movie. stuff? Yeah, so me and my nephew, we created, 
this we got this little space and we just put the like this fire out thing and we're gonna have like these like live recording sessions. I'm just the first artist that came because we created it together. But we're gonna have like a bunch of unsigned artists come through and you know we play live instruments and you know we sing, we vocalize. It's basically like it's just a vibe session, basically. So you know when my friends come to town like genuine and whoever else coming to town, I'm like, hey, come by the galaxy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, you know, see if I can get them to come record and just just vibe out with me. Yeah, well, your, so. your nephew's really talented. I've I've seen him oh, do. Absolutely. I've seen him do feeling. Um, again, I'm like, yeah, I saw him playing yeah. it and the whole vocal and stuff like that. Yeah, and, yeah, and then also with him, with him doing the um, even playing the the piano um, uh, with the she's mine. I'm yeah. like, there's just a. A vibe that we don't get, you know, because a lot of production right now feels as if it's all computer based, but we don't really get the the real instrumentation. Uh, now with us, like we really, we really, really play instruments, and like even when we record and stuff, like I don't use auto tones. If it was a mistake or whatever, most of the time I keep them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a perfect singer, you know. And I I like what I do. I like where I am vocally. I like where I'm artistically, and it's like I said, I'm trying to force something that I'm not on people. I enjoy what I do. And me and my nephew, we make music. Every time I make something, like we'll vibe, or he he produce something. Like, hey man, can you arrange the vocals or the harmony for me on this? And and what what chords did I go through? So we vibe a lot together. So you know, like a lot of my music I make, we make together. Or he come and like, let me add some horns or guitar in this, and you know, vice versa. So you know, we have a cool thing going. So that's why we created Galaxy together. Ah, you know, I remember I interviewed um, Bob from Tim and Bob. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, uh, and he was saying how, you know, how he enjoyed working um, on on the album. He worked with your your, your Maverick album and stuff right. like that. But it, it just spoke about how, you know, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize how much of a like the drumming, a drummer and, 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 and that yeah, you are and stuff. Did you play the drums on Like I Do? You know, the crazy thing. I did. At the beginning, when you hear that, but that's a drum. Yeah, 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 I did that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's dope that you caught that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about it like I did. I thought you were talking about uh, she needs it, but yeah, on uh, on like I did. Yeah, I did actually. Yeah, but but that that's the thing. We it's be able to be able to to see you. Um, because I saw you when you were doing rehearsals for the um 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 for the um um for the culture tour, and then you know you, you know you got back on the drums and you were almost teaching the. I don't know if you're showing the, the drummer and, and the band. Oh, okay, yeah, this is yeah. like look at you know, and, and I think that's yeah. the thing that people are like. Wow, this guy's really because people don't. You, if people might not realize the you know what you know the, the the that side of you because most people just go in the studio and program. Did you ever do that on tour? Did you just go behind and just? I did do the Phil it, Collins. It, it, yeah, I mean, so so this next is I can't I can't let the kid out the bag, but yeah, you're gonna see a lot of. A lot of instrumentation coming on, like like in these the, the latter shows that's coming up with Jodeci. You know, even on this tour, we had I, I built Devante this grand piano, and we we're supposed to come through the whole lately segment. And he at the last minute, he's like, ah, nah, nah. I said, like, come on, I said, like, come on, these like, nah. So we scrapped it, but we still we we're gonna we're gonna put it back in the show because I had the whole thing where you know that building this nice piano, man. It was always if you look at the the block party tour, it was always sitting on the side of the stage, ready to roll out any night he. So I'll ask him to dress him. You want to play tonight? He's like, nah, nah. So it was, it was, if you look, it's always sitting on the side. He's ready to roll it out anytime. But oh, he didn't, good. he wouldn't want to do it, but he's going to, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to do it. Though. But you bring out nah, the drums, I, though. I jump back on the drums, you know, what he do lately. So, yeah. oh, goodness. You know, I, 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 I don't know if you remember Bryce Wilson from Groove Theory. Yeah, Groove Theory. Yeah. And, and, and now, and he, I was saying to him when I interviewed him, I was saying, you know, um, who is it? What's his favorite album? He says Diary of the Madman is the greatest R and B album he's ever heard. And he said about when he he that he when he came into you guys' studio that it was like a spaceship that lights were right. at you. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know, because when we did that album, they had the SL board, the SSL board, the new one. The, the I think it was like three million dollars. We was the first group to use it, and it wrapped all around you like the Enterprise. So yes. it was a new, at first it was just the, you know, the original one was just straight across. We had the one that curved around oh, and it went all the right. So you would sit in the middle and you had like all these like controls, like it was like, you know, Scott, you know, you know, beat me up Scotty and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so you did like, yeah, that. Yeah, so it's like, you know, the people that had never seen it, so we would bring the lights now because it's like a million lights. And yeah. You got levers and meters. And so it looked <laughs> like you were like trying to fly in a studio out the, you know, out the city. But yeah, 
And nobody had never really seen it. Who was the first group to use it in the yeah. hip factory in New York City? He said it was like going into a spaceship that he had never, it just was the wildest thing. And, you know, everyone, yeah. you know, everyone acknowledges that, you know, both you and your brother, you know, you just took music and R&B to, to another level. Do you think we're going to, I mean, is there, is there ever a need for Jodeci to bring out new music? I mean, I know you're doing yours, but or do you think it's great that we remember the classics and then you guys continue doing your individual stuff? Um, I think, I mean, when we asked Michael Jackson to remake Thriller, if he was alive, God rest his soul, or yeah. asked Chris to remake Purple Rain, I mean, could he? I mean, because, you know, sometimes I think being that people sometimes want to judge you on what you've done instead of what you can do, mm -hmm. sometimes as an artist, and in their mind, they're still hearing from my lady. So we create uh, from my girlfriend. Well, <laughs> that don't sound like from my lady. It'll be the same chords, the same music. Oh, that don't sound like fun. We can do the same thing. We just change yeah. one word. But all of a sudden, in their mind, they're, they're holding on to something that you cannot duplicate. So I think that, can we make new music? Of course we can. Can we make great music? Of course we can. Will we? Eh, I don't know. I mean, you know, the, the possibility, we always tinker around and, you know, like me and Casey go to the studio and we'll make something amazing. And then the next thing you know, we're just sitting on our computer for <laughs> forever. Yeah. But, you know, so it's like, you know, sometimes you just, you leave well enough alone and you just keep moving forward. And, you know, if it comes back to making new music, great. But if we keep can keep touring and giving people what they really like and what they want to hear, that's great, too. So, you know, yeah. I mean, you never know. It, we're not close to the possibility of making another album. But right now, the, the most important thing that is on our menu is what we got coming up. It's going to be announced on May Tuesday. And the biopic that, oh. you know, that we've been scraping and scrambling for the last decade and a half. Try to get made. Oh, so you may actually do some music for the biopic then. That that could be a, a thought. Nah, we don't know. I don't know, but we you know we got some things in the in the in the, in the oh. works. It's, it's okay. So and, and would that be separate from? I know that we're trying to do the Uptown story and stuff, and so that 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 would be completely separate from what they were trying to do with Uptown. Oh, yeah, it's completely separate. Yeah, completely separate. Completely a whole different thing. You know, Uptown got their version of. I'm talking about that version of what happened of, you know, their own story. And Jodas got our own, you know, so it'd yeah, be completely different. Okay. I mean, I, I know you've been working hard on, on that. Um, so for the, so for the fans like myself who have been following the stories, um, you do She's need, She Needs Me, that would come out. And then you, you would you, then you're going to go back to Famous I'm and going, start to I'm do some videos? I'm, I'm going back to Famous. That's, that's what's in my mind right now. <laughs> I mean, I might go to bed tomorrow. Come on with something new. Like you know what? But in, but in my mind right now is she needs me comes out this this week Friday on the fifteenth. This Friday, right? Yeah. So and then you know we I'm going back to focusing on famous. But then we got announcement being made Tuesday, so everything is going to kind of be like oh it makes sense now. So what, what so, would be the first single if you were to come out with a video for fame on, on famous? You know, it it, it 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 changes every time I listen. To it, I like I have another favorite song right now. I'm stuck on raw. I, I love. Yeah, raw. I, I like you. Like, that was I, that's number I one like on my raw. list. And I like I like raw, but you know, I mean, I like them all. And, you know, I like "Silly Me" is is to me is a great song too. But raw right now is where I'm at. I've I just got raw repeat in my car and I just blast yeah. it all. Of it. So, yeah, but. Uh, I mean, silly me would probably be the easiest one to do a video. You know, have yeah. like a flow to somebody. She comes up in a, you get a little bar, and you know, you're on stage. She does the poetry stuff, and you come. Oh, you write, you write the video, so you going to credit for it. <laughs> you write the video. <laughs> no, but that, that would be the easiest because, as right, I said, it, right. it has the whole Love Jones vibe. Because I, right, I, so right, I was right. listening to Silly Me, and I was thinking of Love Jones, and I love the film, and I love the whole vibe of the whole poetry and stuff, and right. it just took me back to that night to the nineties. And I thought, you know, that right. would be such a a smooth, a cool vibe, like a little dark room. Probably, well, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna have you, I'm gonna have to have you write it and direct it for me. Then, <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> no, no, but that, I mean, I think that, that it's, it's just that's a, a beautiful vibe. But I love Rob, I think that would that's an energy kind of thing. I don't know if you're going to get ready to do some dancing. And oh, or, man, come on, bro, you, you must don't know that's what yeah, I do. I've, yeah, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen, but it just feels that's that would that, that, be a big, heavy track. Um, but yeah, it'd be great. To, the other question was, on the Jodeci tour, do you have a Mr. Dalvin section where you can, like, you know, New Edition had the Bobby Bright and stuff where you, you, you um, guys can do your own stuff? We we have that in that's, that's ready to go. You know, we all each have a section. But being that we only, you know, you limit to a certain amount of time. And Jodeci got so many records that people want to hear. 
And you know, even still the records that we do, they're like, why, why don't y'all do this record? Why don't y'all do that song? And I don't think fans understand that you have a limited time to do what you need to do. So we picked the best, you know, the best body of work that we can squeeze into that amount of time, yeah. you know, that we feel like, okay, everybody's agreeing to this. Okay, you know, yeah, people gonna be mad that we didn't do this song, we didn't do that, we didn't do this. But these are the best collection of songs that we can fit into this time frame that we have. So, you know, yeah, Casey got, you know, If You Think You're Lonely Now, and, uh, you know, Life, they did on his own. Joda got yeah, All yeah. My Life, and probably Crazy Crazy. You know, I got the records that I want to do on my own. And, you know, Devontae, Devontae just like to get on the piano and play lately, whatever, whatever he does, you know. But it's hard, in, you know, to squeeze all that in the, the short amount of time. We already do, like, some songs we do one verse, and we got to take one verse out just for time purposes. And it's like, you know, so you have to be mindful of what's the best body of work you can give into the allocated amount of time, you know. Well, 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 you guys have a, 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 not just a Jodeci catalog. Because if you think of Babyface, he goes and when he goes on tour, he sings them. He sings Superwoman yeah, and all and, the songs but, he wrote. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. The, you know the, the the stuff Devante can put together, the Usher stuff, and the, all you know all the other stuff. Right. I'm surprised you guys you can have an opening act, but then you guys can take up two and a half, three hours just on your you know do yeah, the whole case yeah. in JoJo. You do your stuff. Dalvin plays, Devante does his stuff, and then you guys come back and, uh, yeah, is, is it, but is it a lot of work? I'll tell you this, Tuesday might answer all those questions for you. <laughs> Tuesday might answer all those questions. You're like, oh, okay, I got it, I get it. So, <laughs> okay, if it, you know, just, just follow me on Tuesday, you'll see. You'll yeah, okay, see. because as I so, said, so, I, huh? No, I I, th I I thought the block party was an you know I love SWG and Drew Hill, but I thought man these guys could do their stuff on their own. They they right. they've got they've got a catalog and they and they've got well you know you know you also dealing I mean you know looking at the business side a lot of people don't know you know you deal with Live Nation I don't think Live Nation really thought that Jodis could get to could sell a tour and they were just shocked the first night we had twelve thousand people in our hometown they. They expected like 3,000 people. It's 12,000 people and people couldn't even get in. And it's every night of the block party tour. I mean, some nights we could have did two nights in the city. So, you know, the tickets would sell so fast and they said they've never seen nothing like this since the 90s. So, you know, of course, when we do business again, I think they have a different mindset of what Jodeci really is. Because you got like a lot of these execs have like new people that come in, don't really know who Jodeci is. They just know the name, no rappers. They don't know the magnitude of what we did. And, you know, some of them, not, they're not black and they don't understand what Jodeci is. They understand what Taylor Swift is. Or yeah. what Beyonce, they don't understand what Jodeci, Boys and Men, and all the, the pioneers of R&B has been. You know, they think that we actually, that was our time. They don't know that that this is that we are the foundation of what R&B music is. So, and they saw that for themselves. So they, they were surprised and they were blown away. So now, I think coming back to the table, they understand how to move. You know, instead of trying to stick us outside in, in cities that don't even, people never heard of and thinking nobody's going to ever come. People travel high and far and wide to come see this show you know, this black party too. And they thought they didn't expect it to do with the numbers. I don't think that it did. And and, and they did it did exceedingly what anybody thought. Everybody's expectations were. It went above and beyond. So, you know, just to show that Jodeci still has staying power, you know, along with SWV and, and with the help of Drew Hill, you know, it was a great tour. Yeah. You, and the reason you're saying that is because I just saw um... – they they just they just showed the the um, the, the breakdown of um, the biggest tours of the year, and R and B came in third after rock and pop. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. more people saw R and B concerts than country. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, like I'm saying, like you know, I would look out there in the audience sometimes and see people walking even see people no more, and I'm like, good gracious, you know. It's, and I was just, and, and we were overwhelmed with gratitude just to see that people still come out and, you know, you got people from anywhere from 16 years old to, you know, 40, 50, however old, you know. And I remember we was in Detroit and uh, we had this one thing and I asked everybody, what's Jodeci's first single? Now, of course, I asked everybody, you know, you got all the fans, you know, they saying, come and talk to me, stay, found my lady, blah, 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 treat them like they want to be treated. <laughs> and uh, 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 what's Jodeci's song? All my life. And I'm like, you know, and this one girl, this one little girl in the front, she said, "Gotta love," and I'm like, and I'm like, and she was screaming so loud. She's like, "Gotta love," and I'm looking. She was so little and had his big voice. And I walked over to her, and I said, "What you just say?" And I put the microphone to her. I said, "Gotta love," and I said, "How do you?" She's like, "I'm 16." Wow. And I'm like, "How do you even know this song?" Wow. And so you got all our fans were just like, "I'm like, y'all should be ashamed of yourself." This girl wasn't even born when this song came out, but yeah. you know, she knew that. 
to me, it's like, wow. You know, but I saw a lot of young faces singing all yeah. the words top songs. And I know that's because their parents were, you know, playing them, at, you know, when they were born. And, you know, a lot of people were born to Jodeci music. And then you got all the rappers saying Jodeci, Jodeci, Jodeci. Yeah. All the hottest rappers that's out right now, you know, mentioning Jodeci. So, you know, that 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 brought a whole new, you know, fan base to what Jodeci was. Yeah, well, think of it. I, I, I was born in Liverpool, but by the time the Beatles broke up, I, I wasn't born. So, but I know their song. So, right, Elvis right. as well. So, uh, great music doesn't disappear. And, right, yeah. and, you know, it's amazing you mentioned about Forever My Lady album. We, we, we have a podcast and we said that that was actually one of our, the greatest, one of the best um, New Jack Swing albums. And our people were like, no, that's not a New Jack Swing. I said, if you listen to the second half of the album, they right. had some amazing New Jack Swing tracks. It's just that, you know, the slow jams took over. But, you know, for right. us in, in Europe, that was that was the you know we we loved those um, you know my phone doesn't ring anymore that was a big track around right. Europe you know right. but I played drums on that song too by the way fun <laughs> I played drums on my phone don't okay anymore, you did I, I I loved that that was that that was massive my phone doesn't ring anymore and um, I loved it I actually didn't realize the, the the that you guys were the same people that did for my lady because we loved the 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 the, 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 right. the temple the new jack stuff. Um, and as I, as I said, it you know you found your lane in it slow slow jams, but mm-hmm. and I know if you try to play those tracks on tour, people will probably say, "Who are this? Is this Aaron Hall stuff?" Right, right. So we we, we do we actually do we did got a love and I remixed it to uh, came through dripping drip drip came through dripping. So and, but people was like it's like oh what song this is this a new song? And I'm like no it's, it's got a love. But a lot of people knew it like you know. They they knew it once we said it, but I just remixed it to you know to the Cardi B track, and it, it was dope. You know, people uh-huh. just you know as I said, once somebody hears something, they want what they want. To me, yeah. I had fun doing it. Like I told people, y'all might not like it, but we love it. Yeah. So <laughs> so but, but we was like ah, you know, they wasn't really feeling it because more people was like listening than actually grooving with it. But you know, yeah, certain people that knew it that was just dancing and stuff. But yeah, you know, I'm gonna oh. like it. I like it. I like performing. The energy of it is good. Wow. I mean, I, I know, as I said, you said Tuesday, we may have some big, big announcements. I just, I think finally, what would you, how is PM, because it seems as if, you know, when we, we ended, we, I interviewed in September, then I think two weeks later, Jodeci signed with PM Music, and they, I saw what they've done to Charlie Wilson, they've sort of, and I've seen what they've done to Babyface as a management company, they seem to take take you guys seriously and, and really, um, and really push, I, I, do you see a sort of people handling it in in a, in a professional way? Um, P Music is, is is a great is a great is a great company. Michael Perrin, who who represents us as a manager, you know he he believes in Jodeci and he's a um, he's very passionate mm. about Jodeci. And so we try to be strategic on how we move. You know we don't want to oversaturate ourselves in every market because you know. It, it kind of kind of devalue devalue as an artist. You know, you got every R and B show that goes out. Some are good, some are not good. But you know, we we, we I think Jodeci is a different group that doesn't have to be on every R and B throwback show because Jodeci is not just R and B. I think we're hip hop, we're rock, we're pop, we're everything. You know, sometimes when you just put yourself at an old school group, and that's what people look at you as. And I don't think that's what Jodeci is. Jodeci is we're timeless and we're 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 ageless. And I think once you start putting yourself in a certain bracket, then that's where you're, you're stuck. Especially, especially you know, you look at r and artists, we tend to age ourselves and, and kind of, you know, exit ourselves out the building, you know, versus you got Rolling Stones who's like 80 and 90 years yeah, old and yeah. they're still selling out stadiums, you know, and they, they take all the, and none against Rolling Stones, I love Rolling Stones, Mick Jack and a whole bunch, but they take a lot from us and we just give it to them and they go make a fortune while we put ourselves in this small box and we call ourselves, oh, we're R&B artists. We're not just R&B artists, they're just everything. So I think that we've been very, we we've conveyed that to 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 P management and P music and understanding what Jodeci is. You know, we're not just a group that has to jump on every throwback show, or every R and B revival, or whatever it may be. You know, we we want to kind of set the pace because we set the tone for a lot of artists that came after us. Yeah. You know, we don't. You know, so it, it's it's only befitting that we keep ourselves at the the you know the quality of what Jodeci is. You know, the money is good sometimes we go out there, but sometimes. You know, easy come, easy go. You know, yeah. it's not all about the money. It's about it's about preserving what you've built and preserving your brand. You know, and not just spreading it thin all over the place to where people just ah, let's just throw Jodeci on here with you know the 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 wood knockers from 
Chakaluka, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's not that. You know, it's like when they, when and when you hear Jodeci, you already know automatically. You gotta you gotta think bigger than what you think. You know, because saying, you bring so. a band. I mean, as I said, we you know right. you, you don't do backing tracks, right? You, it's, it's, right. You get, no, no, I was always every time you see Jodeci, it's gonna be a full band every single yeah. time. And and there's and there's a quality and a, and a standard. Um, yeah. So on Thursday we should get the video and the whole she's mine. Um, that will uh, get she, a, needs, she needs me, so I'm saying she's mine. She needs I think me. It's, it's Friday. It's on the fifteenth Friday. Yeah, fifteenth Friday. But Tuesday we matter. I don't know when this is going to air. So Tuesday the twelfth we're making a big announcement. I'm not sure when you're going to play this, but this Tuesday we're going to have a big announcement as far as Jodeci. And okay. so my week is going to be pretty busy, man. I got I'm promoting two things that's coming out. Two major things for me. That's that's Tuesday and Friday. Okay. So. Okay. But but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, and 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 hopefully we get back onto famous and 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 really get, get oh, we will trust me. Yeah, I, I got big plans for famous. That's that's my that's my my child right now. I'm just you know putting in time out right now. I'm just moving around. But, but, it, but it's, it's going to all make sense. It's going to all make sense to you once you see what I'm doing. Okay, and and but you the, the first one the whole the good times and stuff. Would you would you put that in, back in a package so that, for absolutely. those? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely, those songs are going nowhere. They, they, they didn't, they didn't, you know, they didn't. I didn't. I don't. I never throw in my music because I feel like my music is. It can always come back around. I, I always feel like it's the right person. The right person going to hear it. And somebody going to catch it. And it's going to be like, oh, how did I miss this? And I always felt that about every song I make. You know what I'm saying? So the right, the right ear is going to hear it, and it's going to end up in the right place, and it's going to be what it's, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. You know. Oh. Well, you know what? I I can't thank you enough for um. You know, I know you don't do many interviews, and I know you you especially in a busy time. And I, so I can't thank you enough for for taking time to to. to I like chat. you, man. You cool, man. We talk. We have good talk, so it's cool. Oh, I appreciate that, and 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 hopefully, you know, um, you know, when the when when you when the next project's out, you know, you know, I, as I said, I'm, I, I I do I do listen, I do watch, and 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 I and I know the videos. A, a real quality in that and that's 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 a standard that hopefully right. other artists would would follow you know just following your lead with that so so i look forward to well friday but and Tuesday thank you man well. i appreciate it yeah i appreciate it well right. MS, yeah so, SB, thanks yeah. a lot <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday. i will i tell it <laughs> yeah but thank you man i'll talk to you soon brother yeah i appreciate everything yes yes so, yeah look out for okay, stuff thank you man thank you, <laughs> thanks very much All right. Thank you, man. To, uh, Tuesday and Friday. Tuesday and Friday. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll keep this and wait until Tuesday. Right. <laughs> Later, man. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay. All right. Later. All right. Hey guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, Dalvin. Um, I'm glad he showed up. Um, I'm sure he enjoyed it. And um, yeah. So it looks as if Chiodis here coming out with a massive, massive new tour on Tuesday. And um, and then he's dropped going back to his music stuff on Friday. So, yeah, thanks for watching and um, stay tuned. E3. Hey, yo, what's up? Welcome to the galaxy. It's a Nova. My man Donnie on the bass over here. We got Smurf back here. Background vocals, ad libs. Jerry over here. Background vocals, ad libs. for watching really appreciate it if you love what you watched there's over 100 artists that we've interviewed so please check out the videos remember to like share and subscribe 
But better still, become a member of Halftime Chat and get exclusive videos ahead of time. But thanks for watching. Take care.